All right, welcome to episode 11 of Puck Talk with the Brantford 99ers. I'm your host, Hayden Burnell. This week, I'm joined by another trade deadline acquisition. We've got the goaltender, Dylan Grover. Dylan, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, of course. Looking forward to it. Awesome. So I want to start with your kind of upbringing in hockey because you are uh, from the United States. You're from Rochester. First off, I'll start with uh, I'll start off by congratulating you and the United States on winning the World Junior Gold. Um, still, Thank you. Bitter, still bitter about that a month later, <laughs> but uh, I'm also a good sport, so I'll give props when they're due. So okay. you're from Rochester, pretty close to the border, but where did you play minor hockey? Um, I played Double A growing up, just around Rochester for a few different teams, and then my first real year of Triple A was for the Syracuse Nationals when I was four. Team. and then after that that team kind of everybody went their own way and then I moved up to Kitchener and played my uh 15 year old year in uh Kitchener at the Junior Rangers yeah so how did you get introduced to hockey in Canada um so my coach my major Bantam year was is um Thomas Harley's dad and Thomas Harley's a defenseman for the Dallas Stars right um, and they're dual citizens and so um, the Vikings and you know he went to the OHL route and then um so basically after like team I was like hey like you know just kind of asked him for advice and he said the OHL draft's coming up and if that's an option if that's like kind of the route you want to go then you know going up to Canada would be a good choice so I basically just started typing out emails to a bunch of different teams and uh you know me and Kitchener connected and you know then it's history that's smart because then the following season um, after you were drafted in the eighth round by the Sarnia Sting, you played uh, junior B for the Siskins. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. So you played an entire season there. Was that the year that Cochran started off there? It might have been a year or a, it year, was a year before him. Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, I've heard great things about that program They're I think they're having a really good season this year. But during that season, you also got in a couple games with the Sarnia Sting. Mm hmm. You want to talk about how how that went, like your transition from kind of junior B to the OHL for a bit? Yeah, it was just um, actually both the goalies ended up going down with COVID. Uh, so I got brought up there at, well, actually, I'll rewind. My first game that season, was it wasn't even in my own gear. Really? Um, I just was you know, going to watch one of the games and um, Goudreau got a concussion in the first period and then Thornton was having migraine, so I got a call from the GM. He's like, hey, like, can you just come down here and put on Goudreau's gear and go out and play? And I was like, yeah, I guess so. You're so, kidding. Yeah, I was in London, too. So I walked all the way down to the room, put on Goudreau's gear, and played the first 10 minutes of the second period in my OHL debut. And wow. Goudreau's gear, yeah. It was that wild. Is, that is quite the story. Now, you and him have a bit of a height difference, do you not? Yeah, we do. It was a little tight. The skates were yeah. a little tight. The guys were a little short, but... <laughs> Well, hey, you got it done. I'd love to see. I'd love to see a photo of that. That is that is quite the uh, debut story. I don't think I've ever heard anything like that. Yeah, it was pretty nuts. Yeah, and then you got in a couple more games with them. Were those games that you started, or were you like the backup? Like how how long were you with Sarnia that season that you were with the Siskins? Yeah, because that I think that was in early December, and then I played the game after that I ended up going in after the first period um the game after it against Kitchener and then um this since Goudreau was out with a concussion I just stayed through Christmas break and then after Christmas break um the uh, the goat season got shut down because of COVID for like a month so I just ended up staying with the sting and then both Goudreau and Thornton ended up getting COVID as well so then that's where I got my first two starts there wow um, so I also see that you went from uh, the Siskins in the 21-22 season to the Strathroy Rockets. Uh, was that was that a trade or did you sign with Strathroy or how did that work? No, I, I was up in Sarnia. I moved up to Sarnia that year um, just because when I went to the Siskins, like I didn't initially tend on like Sar signing with Sarnia that year. I didn't really know like what they were going to do with me. So I just figured I went back to my old high school after COVID and um, you know, play with 
my old team, basically a bunch of my old teammates um, before I knew I was going to Sarnia. And then once I signed, then I went up and lived in Sarnia. It was that year was just around the whole team and was just up and down with Junior B and the OHL that year. So did, Goudreau was going to the World Juniors, so they're around right. for when he went. Yeah, so. Interesting. So are Strathroy and Sarnia, do they have like a partnership, do you know? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Okay. So they usually send their prospects in with Strathroy. They'll send them to the juniors just depending on where their spots and stuff. Okay, right. And then it was this year that you made your transition to Junior A. Maybe talk about how, how that came about, how you came from like um, Junior B slash OHL to the OJHL? Yeah, it's just, you know, things didn't work out with Sarnia um, after the Strathroy season. They were just going to stick with the other guy they had. Um, so then I actually knew I was in pretty close buddies with the captain of Coburg. So that's how I, I got there at the start of the year. And then, um, I ended up uh, needing surgery and just wasn't playing so well. So we just parted ways there. And then after my surgery, the junior Sabres gave me the, uh, the luxury of letting me practice and kind of get back on my feet and get back on the ice after being out for a good month and a half. And then um, they ended up throwing me in a few games, which was nice to get, you know, get back feeling good. And then after that, they were basically like, um, hey, Brantford called, like asking about you. Um, like we're just, they just said they were going to stick with the two goalies they had, like respectively. And they're like, hey, like if you want to go play some more hockey and go to Brantford, you, you can. And I was like, yeah, like let's, let's go play some hockey. Let's go play more. So that's where the trade came about there. You got your first, OJHL win against us, didn't you? Sure did. <laughs> yeah, I remember that game. You guys scored with, well, I think it was like 10 Dude, seconds. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Was up in the third. That was a goalie battle. Yeah. But you put up absolutely insane numbers in this league. You've got a 912 save percentage overall. You've got a 930 save percentage overall with the 99ers. That's including a 41 save performance last night. From your transition from, I guess, Coburg, Canada, back to America with Buffalo and then back to Canada. Has this year kind of been like a roller coaster? How, how has the trade to Brantford been for you? How, was, did it go smooth? Was it just like, was it another big change? Yeah, no, it was, it was pretty smooth. I mean, this is my, I think my fourth different villa house. So it's been, I've been all over the maps. I've gotten pretty used to just, you know, packing my stuff up and moving at the, the snap of a finger, but, um, no, it was it was pretty smooth transition, you know, especially living with two other guys and they're they're awesome. So they kind of just helped me, you know, get in with the boys and you know made me really comfortable really quick here. So it was really nice and just having them around is, is really nice too. Yeah, I see that you have definitely gotten close with them and you have gotten pretty close with goaltending partner Zach Burley. I see you guys spend a lot of time together having some laughs. That's just that's mm. great to see. I also wanted to ask you. Uh, about your jersey number you wear number 30 you wore number 32 in Coburg and Buffalo but you wore number 30 with Sarnia with and with us of course you only had a few options but is 30 your go-to number and if so is there a meaning behind it or no 32 is actually my go-to number but I oh it is 32. It here. Oh. um no it was just the number I was given when I was a little kid and I've just always stuck with it. I got it before I was a goalie and coincidentally 32 is kind of a goalie number so For then sure. after I became a goalie I was kind of like it's meant to be so I just stuck with 32 my whole way up and then um the Siskins didn't have 32 and I played for them so I can only I played with 30 there so I figured I'd just keep my starting number the same so I could do I, I was just thinking about like my helmet if I could you know have maybe 30 on the chin I wouldn't have to go back and forth and do all this crazy stuff so for sure yeah um and then once, you know, Coburg offered me to go back to 32, I was like, yeah, I'll take it. So Yeah, fair enough. Um, uh, you said that you started off as a player. How old were you when you switched to goalie? I'd say I was, I was probably 11 or 12 when I switched. No, no, I was like, I think I was 10, 10 or 11 when I switched to goalie. Okay, well, still still pretty late. Still late. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's been it's been awesome having you. And, you know, your, your first impression of the new coaches, uh, your first impression with kind of our leadership group. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Things been great. I think it's a great group of, uh, of people we have. 
you know, leading us and trying to make a playoff push here. The deadline, we've kind of been going on a, a good win streak here. And I think it has, you know, the leadership's really taken over control in the coaching and just everybody's kind of, you know, putting their foot down on the gas and, you know, really trying to make a push here. So it's, it's awesome to see. For sure. Now you are a 2004, which means you have one more year of eligibility in the league. Do you know what you want to do in your future? Like, do you want to continue with hockey? Are you planning on going to school or are you just kind of taking it day by day to see what happens? I know, I know this year you've moved, you've moved quite a bit, but eventually gotten settled here. Um, Do you want to keep playing in the OJHL or um, is there another move in the future for you or what, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think I'm just taking it day by day right now. I'm not trying to look too much in the future, take anything for granted, especially because, you know, in October, I thought my hockey career might have been over with the surgery and nobody reaching out. So right now I'm just, you know, still happy to be playing hockey and um, being back up here. But um, no, actually, during the two months when I was recovering, I actually got my real estate license. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, I've been doing that a little bit on the side and my mom's a broker, so I've been helping her out with a bunch of her um, side work and stuff. So uh, once hockey's done, I've, I probably plan on just doing that, but I'm going to ride it for as long as I can. Well, that's incredible, man. We've been incredibly, incredibly happy to have you. It's been fantastic getting to know you, and I wish you the best of luck continuing the season you're having. Um, Thanks so much for coming on the episode, and yeah, we're happy it all worked out for you that you got to come to Brantford. Awesome. Yeah. Happy to be here and let's go make playoffs now. Perfect. Let's do it. Nine, nine. Nine, nine. Nine, nine. The nine, nine. We're the nine, nine.